Welcome back to the Ant Hill, guys. Today I have a very special treat for you. I brought my friend, good friend, longtime friend from college, and old roommate, Danny Donahue, to the set. How are you doing today, Danny? Doing good. How are you? It's the first time the fans have met you. Yeah. Um, I'm glad to have brought you to set. First things first, I think we got to go through the fit because right. you came dressed very well today. Of course. These shoes are um, Louis Vuitton uh, sneakers and they use the um, kind of pattern that you might have seen on a pair of jeans that they put out before. Um, they did them with Supreme and Louis Vuitton. These are Amiri jeans. These are um, uh, 1200. Shoes dirty, but the wrist clean. What do we got on the wrist? This is a uh, Rolex Datejust and then aftermarket uh, put a lot of diamonds on it. <laughs> How much does that come out to? This watch goes for about 20,000. Right here, Christian Dior, belt with the classic uh, Dior pattern, black CD. This was uh, about $800. And then we got Lightning McQueen. Yes, this is uh, Alexander McQueen t-shirt. Um, I wanna say this was uh, $200, something like that. And now the necklace. Yes, so this necklace is a uh, four millimeter uh, tennis chain. Um, I got it from this jeweler called NYC Luxury. Uh, this was about uh, 22000 You are a professional sports gambler. Mm -hmm. So what made you even want to get into this? What made you think that you had a chance to be yeah. profitable? So I've played fantasy sports since I was in like middle school, right? Um, and where did you get the bankroll? Um, well, that's the thing. I mean, I, I had some money saved up, right? But I really only started with like, I don't know, a thousand bucks maybe. And that might even be a stretch because I remember when I first started, I was constantly depositing because I was not very good, right? Yeah, no one is. No, yeah, you're never never good when you first start any type of gambling. Maybe a couple hundred bucks and I was constantly redepositing that kind sure. of thing. Sure. Is it just a matter of research and like getting addicted to it? or do you think you got extraordinarily lucky? It's a mix of both. Um, I think that I definitely put a lot of time into it and put a lot of time in figuring out what was the right process. And that was a lot of trial and error, right? And so I lost a lot, but then over time I figured out, okay, so this process works. This is the process that other really good players, other pros are using. And I kind of adapted to that over time and was able to get to a point where I was turning a profit consistently. So tell us about 2022. 2022 is my um, second full year uh, doing sports betting and daily fantasy full time. I came off of a really good year in 2021 where I, I still made six figures. That was my first six figure year. Yeah. So I was going into 2022 hoping to at least do the same, if not uh, obviously go further than that. And um, once I would say September rolled around um, in football season and then basketball in October started up, it just got really crazy. Like everything took off. Like I remember um, I had a stretch um, September through December of that year. September was like 20 or 30,000 I made. Then October was like 60,000. November was like 50,000. And then December, that was my I believe my first six figure month ever. So I made like over a hundred thousand that December. That's more than some people make in a year yeah. and you're making it in a month. And that was in a month. So that's kind of when it really hit me like, wow, this is like big money. Like, So what did the final net result come out to? So 2022, uh, around 450,000. Yeah. Damn. And that's as a 20, what, 24 year old, mm -hmm. something like that, two years out of college. So it was, it was crazy. So is this something that anybody can get involved in? I mean, you yeah. came from not a, a statistics background or anything like no, that. I think anyone can get into it for sure. And you see a lot of days, I mean, a lot of times now, sports betting is becoming increasingly more popular. Like everyone is like getting into it, um, which, you know, it doesn't mean that everyone can do it and turn a profit. It'll take a lot when you first get started to figure out what your own process is gonna be, how, what you're gonna be betting on, and then what kind of data you use, that kind of thing. But yeah, for sure, anyone can do it. How much of it was risk versus how much of it was luck and just not losing? My style of play in Daily Fantasy was always kind of geared more towards cash games, right? So trying to turn a dollar into a dollar eighty, something like that. Yes, there was a certain element of luck throughout the years, but I think maybe less so than, than others in that particular space. So now you're in a select few 
Would you say that you are in the top 1% of the people on these sites? Um, if we're talking daily fantasy DraftKings and FanDuel, I would yeah. say yes. Uh, last year in particular, 2023, I would say I was for sure top 500. Do you kind of feel like you're pioneering a little bit in a new space? Like people aren't really sure about it. Yep. They're kind of confused about the concept in a lot of ways. Yep. It's not the same as sports betting. It, you could argue, and this is what a lot of other people argue, is that daily fantasy in particular is more of a skill game. Whereas, you know, sports betting is kind of just like, it, it's literally gambling, right? Main difference between sports betting and daily fantasy is that when you bet on sports, you're just betting against the house, right? You're betting against the lines that they post and obviously hoping to beat them, right? Whereas in daily fantasy, you're competing against other people. Okay, so with that, I think we covered all the business side of things. Let's uh, get over to some of the fun stuff. So this is the whip. Yes, right here we have a 2019 Lamborghini Urus. Um, it is wrapped in a uh, sort of a matte gray, black 23-inch uh, rims. A little dirty right now, but it's all good. Now, what year is this? Uh, it's 2019. Okay. So I'll uh, bring you around here. You can see the inside of the car. And now the most important question, what's the zero to 60? Zero to 60 on this car is it's at a 3.1 or 3.2 seconds. So it's a, a brown interior. So you have the brown and then the two-tone with the black leather on the dashboard. This is what success and hard work look like right here. What's your favorite part of owning a Lamborghini? Favorite part of owning a Lamborghini? Um, it's gotta be the sound, right? To all the losers and haters out there, one time. There we go. That's 100K. That's correct. Thanks, bro. Danny, in, in 10 years, you'll be 36. Right. Still a very young man. You're on the good side of your time, as they would say. Um, where do you see things going from there? Do you picture investments changing at all? And do you still think you'll be doing daily fantasy? Daily fantasy, I think, is at a point right now where it's kind of almost living in the shadows of sports betting. Um, so while I don't think it's going to grow like a ton in maybe the next 10 years, but I think sports betting um, is only gonna get bigger. As far as investments go, I think, uh, I don't think much will change to be honest. I'll, I'll continue to have most of my money in stocks. I mean, a big part of it is also paying yourself for all the hard work. Right. Correct? Yeah. Like you want to reward yourself in this. I definitely have, you could say expensive taste um, when sure. it comes to clothing. And these days I really like um, Louis Vuitton. Um, sure. Then uh, this, this other brand, uh, Miri, which is what these pants are from. I really like their stuff they're coming out with. They're a newer brand. Sure, sure. Um, and then your second love being cars? Yes. So, uh, you know, I have the, the Lamborghini Urus. That's the car that I got uh, about a year ago now. I've had it for a year. I put 15,000 plus miles on it in a year. So it's it's been a blast. That was the single biggest purchase of my life, that car. So one piece of advice for guys out there who are grinding, who are looking to make it big like you did? I would say when you start, when you first start betting on sports, you know, you're going to lose it first. A lot of what separates the people who are you know can make money consistently on it they take that losing they learn from it and they figure out some sort of game plan it's like okay focus on what you think you know don't let other kinds of uh betting cloud your judgment too much well hey thanks for coming to the, Absolutely. To the show thank you for having me as a first guest and uh many more to come and uh we'll catch you on the next one <laughs>